I will start by saying that this story is not your typical crazy, action-filled, scary tale. It doesn't involve me encountering a monster with a stench of rotten meat and shooting it, then just barely escaping. If that is what you expect, then this story is not for you. This is however a 100% true story, which happened to me personally. I will first give a little background. I grew up in one of the European countries which were under the Iron Curtain during USSR, and this is where this story takes place. I grew up only with my mother, since my father died when I was 4 from a brain slash heart episode. After he died, my mother was absolutely fucked and she found solace in some of those new age beliefs and whatnot. But she eventually landed in the realm of Tsukshin. Tsukshin is a path of Tibetan Buddhism which basically tries to strip you of everything you don't need, to put you in the state of simple being. That's how I understand it anyway. When I was little, we were often going to this one center, which was in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by woods and meadows. It was a place where people could unwind and be at peace. I should also mention, that Sokshen has certain rituals, which generally involve meditation. One that stuck in my mind is called Ganapudsa, not sure if I spelled it correctly, during which bits of food are offered to the hungry spirits by first blessing it or something, then leaving it outside. This ritual might be relevant to what happened to me, or not. I should probably say that I'm not religious, but I'm pretty sure that there is more to all this than we can perceive with our monkey brains. Take psychedelic experiences for example. I'm telling you all this, because that's where it all began, in that center. I was about 11 years old and it was summertime. We have been spending a few weeks in the center. I was there with one of my friends, Simon. Simon is a year older than me, making him about 12 at this time. His mother and my mother were friends, so we were there together. It was a good time for us, because during the day we could do shit in the woods unsupervised, while our mothers were doing their stuff. During the night however, me and Simon had to sleep outside in a tent. I'm not sure if it was because there simply was not enough space inside, or we weren't allowed to sleep inside, since we were not community members. We definitely were not allowed to take part in the rituals, not that it mattered to us. Some sort of celebration was taking place in the days leading to my first encounter, during which several rituals were performed, one of which might have been Ganapudsa. So, that night me and Simon were sleeping in a tent, as usual. In the middle of the night something woke me up. I was staring at the tent above me, when I heard this slow, heavy, wheezing, raspy breath. Inhale, exhale. I just about pissed myself, my little heart racing. It sounded like it was outside of the tent and right next to my head but it could have also been some way off. It was loud and very clearly audible. Like, it definitely wasn't just the wind or something. Something was breathing. I laid there for a few minutes shitting myself, then like the little bitch I was, I tried to wake up Simon. I nudged him and he partially woke up. I should say that this dialogue is paraphrased and translated from my language, but it went something like this. Simon, are you up? I keep hearing this fucking breath and it's scaring me. What? What are you talking about? Just listen. Then, silence. No one said anything for a few seconds. We could hear only the normal nature sounds. I don't hear anything, you must have dreamed it, said Simon, but as he was saying it, I heard a sharp inhale outside of the tent. Shut up. I just heard it. I said. A few more seconds of silence and then, a loud exhale. It was very clearly audible. This. Did you hear it? I asked. He said that he didn't hear it and that I must be imaging it. And while he was saying this, the breath could clearly be heard outside. He didn't fucking hear it. I didn't want to look like a pussy, so I didn't keep pushing it. He quickly fell asleep, but I must have been awake for a few hours, during which I kept hearing the breath. Sometimes it paused for a few minutes, but eventually it would resume. Eventually I somehow fell asleep, even though I was scared as shit. The next day we talked about it and he said that he remembers it, but that he didn't hear anything. I even told my mother and she brushed me off. I eventually convinced myself that it was nothing to worry about, that it must have been some animal or something. Fast forward a few weeks. I was falling asleep in my room at home, when I heard a sharp inhale. It sounded exactly like that one before and I immediately started panicking. I turned on the light on my phone and aimed it into the room. Nothing. My heart was pounding but eventually I figured I must have dreamt it or something. It happened several more times on different days. It usually was just one inhale. Once I heard a few inhales slash exhales, but I was paralyzed by fear and after a short while it stopped. Then came the second serious encounter. At this point I was about 14 or something. I was sleeping over at my friend's house, Tim. Tim was also living just with his mother, because his father was an American who left her. 
They lived in a pretty run-down house, which the grandparents received as a thank you from the commies. I don't know the story. Anyway, this house was fucking creepy. It was a two-story house, but basically had just two rooms, attic, cellar and toilet room. One of the rooms was downstairs one upstairs. The one downstairs was where his mother slept and there was a kitchen and bathroom. The toilet however was under the stairs, wooden and creaky. Tim's room was upstairs and the door to the attic was also there. So going to the toilet in the middle of the night was creepy on its own, since there was just one weak light bulb which wasn't enough to cover the whole stairs. To take a piss, you had to leave Tim's room, walk a few steps in complete darkness to pass the door to the attic and reach the light switch, which threw a dim light on the stairway, descending into the dark. Then you had to walk down the creaky stairs, pass the door to Tim's mother's room and open a door, after which two more doors were revealed, one on the left, one on the right. The right door a lead to the cellar and often was not closed, for some fucking reason. Behind the door on the left was the toilet. It was just a tiny room and you could barely fit in there if you wanted to take a shit. There was also a tiny mesh window near the ceiling. The creepiness of the midnight toilet journey often lead to us just pissing out the window in Tim's room into a wild rose bed. The night that the encounter happened, I unfortunately had to take a midnight shit. So I took the creepy journey and by the time I was taking a shit on the toilet, I was pretty jumpy. I was also shivering and cold, because it was cold outside and as I said, there was only a mesh window, no glass or insulation. So I'm sitting there, and then I heard the breath again. It was coming from the mesh window. It sounded just like when I heard it before, it's a very distinct kind of breathing, almost wet. Constant inhales slash exhales. If you looked at the window from the outside garden, it would be only like half a meter above the ground, since the toilet room was partially underground. But when you were sitting on the toilet, the window was like a meter above your head. The breathing sounded like it was right in the window. Very loud and clearly audible. I was literally shitting myself, not having enough courage to look up. I was trying to be as silent as possible, because I felt that I'm in a real danger. But from the outside it would have been obvious that someone is using the toilet, because of the light. I sat there for a few minutes, listening to the breath. Then I kind of mentally numbed myself, wiped my ass, stood up, shut the light without looking at the window and then ran up the stairs. I told him and his older brother who was also there about the breath. They made fun of me, that there was probably a pervy dog or something, but they thought that it's creepy. I sometimes kept hearing the breath in my room when falling asleep, as before, until I was about 16, when it kind of just stopped. None of these things on its own would be enough to make me think, that something is going on. But when I look at all of them, it makes me think that something really might have latched onto me, basically trying to make me scared and feeding of the fear. I don't know, maybe not, but it's stuck in my mind many years later and when I hear creepy breathing in movies or something, it instantly makes me on edge. Does anybody know about folklore entities associated with breathing like this? Any similar experiences? Thanks.